In this episode of Real Chemistry, we're going to talk about doing unit conversions with things like miles per hour or miles per gallon. Now, these are both called derived units because we're combining two different units to measure something. So how fast is your car going? Well, we combine miles and hours to figure that out. How efficient is your car? We combine miles and gallons to figure that out. So if you haven't watched my video on unit conversions, go ahead and do that first, because this video assumes you know how to write conversion factors to do this process. So here are some examples of the uh, unit conversions we might do here. Miles per gallon to kilometers per liter. That's this guy over at the far right. Or say miles per hour to feet per second. We could also go grams per milliliter to pounds per gallon. So there's all sorts of these derived units around. And in this video, we're going to learn how to go between them. So our very first unit conversion says, how many miles per gallon does a car get if it gets 17 kilometers per liter? So if you're renting a car and you're in Europe, they might tell you the fuel efficiency of the car in kilometers per liter. And you might want to know, what's that in miles per gallon? Because I don't speak kilometers per liter. So here's how we can figure that out. I've broken it down into three steps. Step one says, write down the starting quantities and target units. So starting quantity again is 17 kilometers per liter. That's what we're starting with. And we want to go to miles per gallon. So I'm going to write down 17 kilometers divided by liters. And we're trying to go to miles per gallon. So remember that per thing tells us that it's miles over gallons. Whenever you hear per, it's telling you to put the unit first up top and the unit your second on the bottom. So miles per gallon means miles over gallon. Kilometers per liter means kilometers over liters. Step two says set up conversion factors for each unit. So we're gonna do this just like the other unit conversion problems where we set up a conversion factor that helps us get rid of one unit and get a new unit. But now we're gonna use multiple conversion factors because we're dealing with multiple units. So first let's do the kilometers. So if kilometers up top in our starting units, it's up top, that means we need to write it on the bottom of our conversion factor to get rid of it. And we know that we wanna to go to miles over here at the end, our target units are miles. So that means we're gonna to wanna to write miles up top. And then we fill that in from our equalities that we've been given. We know that 1.609 kilometers is equal to one mile. So that tells us to write the 1.609 next to kilometers, because that's what it's next to in the equality, and the one next to miles. So that right there is gonna take care of our kilometers. Kilometers are gonna cancel out because we have kilometers divided by kilometers, and we're gonna be left with miles. That's half the conversion process. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna get rid of that liters, because our liters down here on the bottom, we eventually wanna take to gallons. So that's what this next conversion factor is gonna do. Oops. So if I wanna get rid of the liters, which are currently on the bottom, that means I need to write the liters of my conversion factor up top. So that's a little different from the previous unit conversions. The reason that is, is since my liters are on the bottom to start with, I need to write them on top so that they still cancel out. It'll still be liters divided by liters, get, gets rid of the liters. And since I know I want to go to gallons, I'm going to write gallons on the bottom. And then I'm going to fill it in from our equality. Our equality says 3.78 liters is equal to one gallon. So I'm going to write that 3.78 by the liters and the one gallon down on the bottom. So if I plug that into my calculator, I'm going to multiply through. That's what step three says. And so basically I'm going to be taking 17 and I'm going to divide that by 1.609 and multiply that by 3.78. And after rounding for sig figs, that's going to give me 48 miles per gallon. So it turns out that car that gets 17 kilometers per liter gets pretty good fuel efficiency, 48 miles per gallon. It's basically a Prius. In this problem, we're asked how fast in miles per hour is a paintball traveling if it's going 280 feet per second? So again, we're just going to follow these same three steps. We're going to write down the starting quantity and target units. So our starting quantity in this case is 280 feet per second. So I'm going to start out with 280 feet per second. So we start with 280 feet per second and we want to go to miles per hour. And way over here we're going to eventually get 
miles. And remember that per means the hour is gonna go on the bottom. And that's important because that's gonna tell us how we write our conversion factors. Okay, step two says set up conversion factors for each unit. And you'll notice here that we're actually gonna do our time conversion in two steps because it's common to know how many hours or how many minutes are in an hour, 60, and how many seconds are in a minute, 60. It's not as common to know, say, how many seconds are in an hour. So we're gonna go through that process in two steps. And we can just add as many conversion steps as we need to to get our problem done. So if we wanna get rid of our time first and our initial units are in seconds, we have the seconds down here. That means that's the first thing we wanna take care of. So we're gonna get rid of seconds. And to get rid of seconds, I need to write that up top. That's gonna help it cancel out. And if I'm starting with seconds and I know how many seconds there are in a minute, that means in this first step, I'm just gonna go from seconds to minutes. And my equality tells me, hey, there's 60 seconds in every one minute. Now, that equality is gonna cancel out seconds and give me minutes. But remember, eventually, I wanna get to hours way over here. So if I wanna get to hours, the next step is gonna be getting rid of those minutes and taking it to hours. So I'm gonna multiply by another conversion factor. And in this case, I'm gonna cancel out the minutes by writing the minutes up top. And I know I wanna to go to hours, so I'm gonna write hours on the bottom. And far, further, I know there's 60 minutes in every one hour. So this is gonna to totally take care of my time variable. Seconds are gonna cancel out here, minutes are gonna cancel out there, and I'm gonna be left with hour on the bottom, exactly what I wanna to get to. So the last thing we have to do is we have to take care of this feet to mile conversion. And I know that we need to do that because I start out in feet and I wanna to get to miles. And so since feet is up top, and my conversion factor, I'm gonna write feet on the bottom. And since I know I wanna to get to miles up top, I'm gonna to write miles up top. Then I go to my equality and it tells me 5,280 feet in every one mile. So I write 5,280 by the feet and one by the mile. All right, and that's gonna take care of my feet. You'll notice that the feet over there cancels out with the feet down here. And then I'm gonna do the last step, multiply through. So basically I'm gonna take 280, I'm gonna multiply that by 60, I'm gonna multiply that by 60 again to take it from minutes to hours, and then I'm gonna divide by 5,280 to take it from feet to miles. And if I do all of that, after taking into account significant figures, I have 190 miles per hour. So those paintballs going 280 feet per second are moving very fast. All right, last example problem. The density of water turns out to be one gram per milliliter. What's the density of water in, in pounds per gallon? So the key here is once again, just to write down the starting quantity and the target units. And my starting quantity is one gram per milliliter. And my target units are pounds per gallon. So I'm gonna write out one gram per milliliter. And I'm gonna to wanna to go to pounds per gallon. So, step two says set up conversion factors for each unit. And first we're gonna take care of these grams. So we're gonna go between pounds and grams. You can do these unit conversions in whatever order you want and they're not gonna be wrong. So if you said, oh, I wanna take care of the volume first, that would be fine too. So our first conversion factor wants to get rid of the grams and we wanna get pounds. So we're gonna write grams down here in the bottom and pounds up here on the top. And our conversion factor tells us there's 454 grams for every one pound. So that means we're gonna write the 454 down here and the one up there. So that's gonna get rid of our grams. The grams will cancel. Now, to do our volume conversion, we're gonna, gonna take two steps because it's very common to know how many liters are in a gallon and how many milliliters are in a liter, but not necessarily how many milliliters are in a gallon. So since we started with milliliters, First, we're gonna go from milliliters to liters. You always look at your starting unit as a guide for what conversions you wanna do. And since we have milliliters down there on the bottom, then a good guess for our next conversion is taking milliliters to liters. 
And here, since our milliliters are on the bottom in our initial units, we notice over here our milliliters are hanging out down there, we're going to have to write our milliliters up top. And we know that this conversion factor is going to give us liters because that's what our equality between milliliters and liters is telling us. And then our equality tells us there's 1,000 milliliters in every 1 liter. So that means we write the 1,000 by the milliliters and the 1 by the liter. Okay, so that's going to get rid of our milliliters, but it leaves us with these liters down here in the bottom. So how do we get rid of those? That's where our next conversion factor comes in. And that's going to take us between liters and gallons. So we want to get rid of those liters. And that means we're going to want to write liters up top in this conversion factor. And we want to get out gallons. That means we're going to write gallons on the bottom here. So this conversion factor is going to take us from liters to gallons. And if we look at our equality, it tells us, hey, there's 3.8 liters for every one gallon. So that means we're going to write 3.8 by liters and one by our gallon. All right, those are conversion factors. And notice, now our liters have canceled out, and we're gonna be left with pounds per gallon, exactly the units we want. So step three just tells us to multiply through. And what we're gonna do there is we're gonna take one, our starting quantity, divide it by 454, multiply it by 1,000, and then multiply it by 3.8. And that's going to take us through all of our conversion factors. And if we do that after we take into account sig figs, we're just going to get 8 pounds per gallon. So let's write those units a little closer to it. And we have 8 pounds per gallon. So it turns out water weighs about 8 pounds per gallon, which you may have heard. So that's advanced unit conversions. Basically, we use the same processes we used in the simple unit conversions, only now we do them multiple times because we're dealing with multiple different units. If you have any questions, please ask them below. Always feel free to go to my channel to see my other videos, and please subscribe to get updates.